which fools the software and into giving up false results and our planning is flawed so you need to remember this thing now moving on to the time calculations using the same network i have put in some random uh, duration to the activities a to b for c one day d four days e six days f seven days will be assigning uh, normally these uh, time calculations so uh, rule number one uh, step number one is numbering the events here foot rule method of uh, parkinson's rule we need to follow which states we start off the numbering of events from left and from top to bottom which means the event on the left hand side would be one and as we move along see if there are two events falling in the uh, on the same axis then the uh, number or the event which is higher along the y axis will have a least number and the one event one uh, event which is having a lower y coordinate will be getting the greater number so uh, we have correspondingly uh, numbered our events that is a starts with 1 and ends at 2 b starts at 2 and ends at 3 similarly c starts at 2 and ends at 5 d starts at 3 and ends at 4 similarly goes on up to 10 next step is finding the path from start to end in this setup uh, try to find out the path i have lined up uh, the same for you in the next slide let's go uh, there are three paths possible as we go from event 1 to event 10 they are represented by three lines over here one is orange yellow and red path number will one uh, one first path will go from one uh, will be having activities a b d f i and j path number 2 will be having activities a b d then dummy activity e g h and j and the third part over here will be having activities a c e g h j now to calculate the length of the paths and the critical path will be adding timelines to it uh, i've just summarized uh, the three possible paths over here calculating the times first path was 1 a to b 3 which is events will have a zero time dummy activity will have a zero time so if we add on first path has a duration of 21 days second path has a duration of 27 days third path has a duration of 20 days so the second path being the lo uh, longest will take precedence over the path convergence events for event time calculations which will be followed uh followed by this and this is also called the critical path this is the most important path or this gives you the duration of the project this gives you critical activities that need to be monitored without fail any delay in these activities will definitely directly hamper your project duration moving on to event time calculations there are two types of uh, event times that is earliest time uh, earliest time at which an event must occur so that the critical path does not change it is calculated in forward pass forward pass means adding up uh, the timelines from start to end second type of time is late time it is the latest time at which an event must occur so that critical path does not change means it is basically giving you a play in a certain event that it can be delayed but the critical path will not change this is also i'll show you in the following slides it is calculated in backward pass means 
we calculate the time we uh, move from last event to the first event subtracting the duration of the activities so just to simply summarize i have made a graphical representations of a representation of our event event times can be seen over here event 1 is happening on day 0 event 2 is happening on day 2 5 on day 4 but so this is a basic summary but now let's move on to the forward pass forward forward pass is simple event 1 is having zero time te for event 1 is zero as it is the on, uh, on it marks the onset of the project we move to uh, event 2 which is done means which oversees activity b so 0 plus 2 will result in 2 now our paths diverge event 3 uh, two will be added to four will be having an event time six c will means and event time of two plus one is equal to three on five but five marks the start of activity e activity e cannot start until activity d finishes so six plus four ten the te for uh, event 4 will be transferred to event 5 as uh, for the dummy activity the timeline is zero so at event 5 we have two tees that is 3 and 10 so uh, consider a situation where i have to start an activity and my work depends on completion from two people one is mukesh another is ramesh mukesh consider uh, has finished his works in work in 3 days and ramesh completes in his work in 10 days so when can i start my work once both them both of them finish their work so what is the earliest time that i can start it is the time that is given by ramesh so that means 10 days it is a very simple concept easy to uh, remember in the forward pass whenever the paths are converging whatever the maximum time is coming take that moving on similar case we can see at event 9 where from path number 1 we are getting a timeline of 7 days and from path number 2 we are getting a timeline of 24 days so we'll be taking the maximum that is 24 days here we can see even tem 10 has te of 27 which was equivalent to our duration of second path which was the longest path now calculating the backward pass will be moving from activity 10 to activity 1 and will be subtracting the durations from uh, 10 to 0 27 to 0 similar 27 will start off uh, from the right hand most corner 10 minus 3 24 now the paths diverge 24 minus 7 will give you 17 24 minus 2 will give you 22 17 minus 1 similarly when you come on d you will be having two uh, tls one from path number 2 that is 10 and one from path number 1 that is 15 7 uh, 22 minus 7 is equal to 15 ignore this 17 this is a typo error so in the backward pass we have to choose the minimum of the two values that is 10 now this is a simple representation of event times you can see over here uh, in the black in the corner uh, i have given you a simple uh, layout of what means what time written over the event is 
earliest time the one written below is the lowest time similarly uh, we were discussing tl the latest time when a activity can start without delaying the project so over here you can see at uh, a event can occur without delaying the project there is a difference between sorry tl and ti of event 6 that is te is 17 and tl is 22 that means there is a play of 5 days in which uh, in happening of event 6 which means even if we uh, change the duration or uh, happening from 7, 17 to 22 the complete path duration will not change this is a separate activity that you can do and try it on i have summarized the same for you the difference of all the events falling on critical path is zero difference of uh, all the te and tl for all the all the events falling on critical path is zero now moving on to activity time calculations there are four types of activity first is early start it indicates the earliest date at which an activity can possibly start based on its predecessors and successors it is also calculate it is similar to your uh, uh, te it is calculated in your forward pass early start is equal to early, uh, early start can simply be considered equal to early finish of the predecessor activity now what is early finish represent the earliest date uh, an activity can possibly finish of all the predecessor and successor also finish on their respective early finish dates it is also calculated in forward pass early finish is equal to early start of the activity plus duration of that activity now uh, next is late start it represent the latest time at which an activity can start without affecting the planned project finish date that is without increasing the duration of the critical path or changing the critical path it is calculated in backward pass late start is equal to late finish of the successor activities uh, less activity duration late finish indicates the recent date an activity can finish without extending the finish of the project it is also calculated in backward pass late start okay uh, now i have summarized uh, all the activity times for you i have uh, taken the example uh, from i have continued from the pre previous example say activity a duration was two days early start would be zero as it is the start of the activities and going on the duration we will be getting early finish as two days moving on where there are convergence you need to note for having two predecessors take max of early finish of predecessor activity c uh, for activity e early start would be maximum of c 6 and d that is 10 now when we go into backward pass 27 early finish will move on to late finish will be subtracting uh, duration of activity j that will uh, bring it out to 24 similarly moving up the activity having two predecessors two successor minimum we need to take late start as minimum of successor activities for activity d they it has two successors that is e and f so late start for e is 10 and for f is 15 we have to take minimum of these two that means 10 this is a comprehensive summary of the activity types you can finish it up uh, means you can carry on uh, the exercise i'll be discussing a few more important concepts that are uh, used in development of an even uh, a schedule here i have tried to represent the network that we had developed in an activity on node format here 
yellow represents the early start blue represents early finish uh, this kinish color represents a late start and light blue color shows late finish the number in the green is the duration of the activity now we'll be discussing some of the important concepts that are used to analyze the project or the critical path first is the floats there are four types of floats total float free float interfering float independent float so total float is the duration by which an activity can be delayed without increasing project duration it can be calculated in two parts first is total float for an activity and second is total float for a path total float for a path is calculated simply by duration uh, subtracting the duration of the path from the duration of critical path secondly the total float for an activity is given by late start minus early start then moving on to free float duration by which an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of the successor activities free float is given by early finish of the current uh, early start of the next activity minus early finish of the current activity if you try to calculate in the current example that i am using uh, early free float will be zero floats uh, continued that is interfering floats interfering floats float means duration by which the start of an activity can be delayed without increasing the project duration it is simply the difference of total float and free float independent float means duration by which an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of the succeeding activities and without being affected by allowable delay of predecessor activities it can be calculated uh, by earliest uh, successor early start minus earliest predecessor late finish minus activity duration then there are uh, relationship between the activities that is fs start of activity 2 is dependent upon finish of activity 1 start ss start of activity 2 is dependent on start of activity 1 ff finish of activity 2 is dependent on finish of activity 1 sf finish of activity 2 is dependent on start of activity 1 dependencies uh, there are two types of dependencies lead and lag first lead start or finish of activity 2 is advanced on start or finish of activity 1 this these dependencies are used in combination with your relationship to formulate a uh, complex schedule then there is lag start or finish of an activity 2 is delayed on start or finish of activity 1 moving on if we master our basics one day we'll be able to develop a schedule like this this is a screenshot from one of my schedules in from msp so moving on uh, these are the basic softwares that are used today in market that is microsoft project primavera 6.0 candy sap scheduler microsoft excel this is the most widely used software here are some reference books these you can note down to go into the depth of the concepts that i have just discussed <clears throat> 